Hello and welcome to another special projects build in GT7. It's been quite some time since I last did one of these, but I wanted to do a couple of these kind of old school, early days of the channel kind of tunes to celebrate hitting 100k. Thank you once again for that to all of you who have been along for the journey. And this one is one of my more extreme builds in terms of the base vehicle, the Aston Martin 177. Now I won this one on uh, a daily spin. One of the best spins I've had, because I don't usually get prizes like that. And in terms of the visuals, with most of these special projects builds, I like to use somebody else's livery and then give them a shout out. It's just a nice little way of including the community, and obviously it saves me some time as well on designs which may be a bit more complex or take a bit longer. So for this one, the purpose is, as you'll have seen from the video title, from the thumb, a GT1 style kind of what if build for the 177. So it has less power than a standard one, but it's also a lot lighter, way more downforce, way more grip. Kind of like that Maserati MC12 or Celine S7R sort of era. And in terms of getting this particular design, you want to go into the discovery section of the main menu, of course. And then if you look up this player, or if you use these associated tags, you'll be able to find this build, this visual build, that is. Now, at the time of releasing this video, this design from this player has 19 likes. So I'm very curious to see how many of you can go over there and give it some love and see how high we can get that number, because I think that would be pretty cool. So with that in mind, that's it for the visual side. Then of course, for my side of the deal, you need to also incidentally fit the wide body kit for that particular one, which obviously affects the points as well. But as far as the tuning, as I said, for my side of this video, then you want to work through basically as you would with a race car, so certain things you won't need, like for example nitrous, but then as far as the stuff which I would recommend, of course you want the full weight reduction package, which is stage 4 in the case of this car. I'm sure there's a stage 5 that you can win from a spin, but for most of us that won't be an option because they're so rare. 1,255 kilos isn't as light as I would have liked. That's a good 100 kilos heavier than GT1 from that era, but there's nothing we can really do about that. As far as the rest, we've gone for the power restrictor. You will need that because it's got a lot less power than a standard 177. You definitely want some ballast as well, because if you do need to add weight for any particular race, or if you want to get it down to, say, 725 or 700 points, then it gives you the option. Of course, as I said, stage 2 weight as well. You want the fully customised computer, mostly because that allows you to de-restrict the engine that much more. The fully customisable limited slip diff, stage 3 weight of course. As far as the racing parts, I've gone for the racing silencer. Again, it's got less power, so you don't strictly need that, but I've gone for it for the visual change, and of course because it makes the car sound more like a race car. Likewise with the exhaust manifold, we've gone for the racing brake pads as well. I've gone for slotted discs. It doesn't really matter if you go for slotted or drilled, or technically carbon ceramics, but I go for slotted or drilled depending on whichever one I feel like. Again, it's more of a visual thing, and you save some money over the carbon ceramics as well. The racing clutch and flywheel pretty much goes without saying. Fully customised suspension, suspension even is essential on this tune, likewise with the transmission as well. Of course, stage 4 weight. I've gone for racing hards, because racing hard tyres, of course, tend to be what most race cars come with, so it gives you a better, uh, a better comparison of how this car compares to existing Group 3 cars, for example, or Group 2s in some cases, and also it will be more suitable for endurance racing, and just gives you a better idea of what it's actually like, whereas if you put softs on it, you're kind of just getting the best of, you know, the best of possible grip, which can skew how good the car actually is. So using hards basically gives you a better idea of what the car's actually like. Now to go into the home garage, you can see that the points are not sitting at a particularly even level, because this is just a fantasy build. It's all about the fun. Likewise with the power. It may seem strange to some people to drop it from 730 to 620. Again, though, that's to fit in with those GT1 style regulations. So fit your racing hards. As far as the suspension, we've got the ride height on 95 millimeters. So very close to the lowest. But as you can see, that's technically a little bit higher in relation to what the lowest can be on the front. For the anti-roll, we've stiffened those right up to 7. Likewise with the compression aspect of the dampers, that's all the way up to 38. 43 on the expansion side. The frequency of the springs we've put up to 315. Then 1.5 degrees of camber on the front and the rear. And of course that is negative camber in particular. For the tow, you want to tow out the front by 0.10. And tow in the rear by 0.10. 
which basically has the same effect. By towing in the back and towing out the front, it just stiffens it up a little bit and increases the amount of understeer. In other words, it makes it a bit heavier through corners, which in turn makes it a little bit less prone to sliding around as much and a little bit more controlled and composed. And it means that if the car does step out, you can control it a bit better. As far as the diff, pretty simple, 10, 40, and 20, which if I recall, might actually be the standard settings that the diff comes with when you fit the racing one. NOS is not fitted, as I said. I would recommend 350 kilometers an hour on the auto setting for the transmission. I have not touched the individual gears. And if you're curious how quick this is, it can do up around 200 or so miles an hour. So it's about accurate to the kind of performance that you'd want from this kind of machine. Power restrictor is untouched. The ballast is untouched. You could add some, as I said, if you need it to get to 700 points or whatever. And 75% power on that fully customizable ECU to bring the power right down. As far as the downforce, I've gone for something which might seem a bit odd to some people, but give it a try and see what you think. 220 for the front downforce, which, as you can see, is the highest it can go. But then on the back a little bit higher, but not the maximum on the rear. And what that does is it allows the car to really dive into corners on that front end, but the rear end is just a little bit softer and a little bit looser. Sounds like a bad thing, but as I said, give it a try first and then get back to me on what you think. At the end of the day, I wanted the car to feel like a bit of an animal, something that could bite back. I didn't want it to be too beginner-friendly or too easy to use, but at the same time, it is a genuinely fast car. And then as far as the rest, you can see the air cleaner standard. We've got all those fitted and not fitted, as the case may be, with all four stages of weight reduction. Now, all that remains, of course, is to take this out on a circuit, and what better place to take it than the Nordschleifer? Now, as you'll be able to see in this replay, the car is an animal. As I said, that's what I wanted. I wanted it to be a machine which you could really be rough with. You can throw this car into corners and also, because of the setup which I'm using, which you just ran through with me, you can kind of regulate the car's amount of grip using the brakes mid-corner. And that might sound a little bit strange, but if you give it a try, copy exactly what I've done here to begin with, is what I would recommend, and then you can adjust whatever you feel is necessary. But if you drive this car on a track like the Nordschleifer, where it's a very undulating surface, very technical tight corners, where it's all about that flow from corner to corner, I personally think this is one of my favorite builds I've actually done. It's a savage car, it looks amazing, it sounds great. It's a really cool idea of what could have been. We never had, of course, a GT1 version, but it also feels the part. That's the cool thing. It feels like a GT1 car of the time. Not necessarily what would have been like the fastest thing on the grid, but certainly a car which you could imagine that happening to. The main thing I wish I could change is really to drop that weight down to 1150 kilos, because that would be that much better and that much more accurate, but unfortunately, I just don't have that option. So ultimately, that's it for the build, that's it for this special project. Show the design of some love as well if you plan to make this build, and of course, stick around on the channel for more. And if you do decide to do this on your 177, tell me down below if you have fun with it, and until next time, I'll see you with more. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.